Now that we've studied the supremum of sets and the limits of sequences a little bit, you may notice that there is a good deal of similarity between the two concepts. In this lesson, we'll prove one of those connections that the supremum of a set and the limit of a sequence has. Let S be a subset of the real numbers that's bounded above. Thus, by the completeness axiom, S has a supremum. Then, there exists a sequence, say A n, where every term of the sequence is in S, and the limit of the sequence is the supremum of S. So, S contains a sequence converging to its supremum. So that's what we're going to prove. Every set that is bounded above contains within it a sequence that converges to its supremum. Now, of course, I say that the set contains a sequence loosely. The sequence isn't an element of the set. I just mean that the sequence consists of terms that belong to the set. This is a nice proof because it's pretty straightforward, but we do get to use two nice tools that we have proven. First, we'll need to use the epsilon definition of supremum. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that this is equivalent to the original definition of supremum. This alternative definition of supremum basically just tells us, since the supremum is defined to be the least upper bound of a set, if we subtract any positive number number from the supremum, that smaller number can't possibly be an upper bound of the set. Additionally, we'll be using the sequence squeeze theorem, another very nice result, and I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that. So, how can we prove our result? How can we guarantee the existence of a sequence of terms within the set S that will converge to the supremum? Well, for convenience, let's give the supremum of S a short name. So, we'll say the supremum of S is equal to alpha. Then, taking note of the epsilon definition of supremum, that tells us that for any epsilon greater than zero, if we subtract epsilon from our supremum alpha, that will no longer be an upper bound of S. Now, what in particular does that mean, not being an upper bound of S? Certainly, alpha minus epsilon not being an upper bound of S means that S contains an element, say A, that's greater than alpha minus epsilon. And it is through this power of the epsilon definition of supremum that we're going to be able to take elements from our set that get closer and closer to the supremum. Because notice this, we have that alpha minus epsilon is less than A, but remember A is an element of S and alpha is the supremum of S. So A must be less than or equal to alpha, certainly. No matter how small epsilon is, the definition of supremum is going to guarantee us an element of S that fits in between these two numbers. So clearly, by making epsilon smaller and smaller, we can squeeze A to get really, really close to the supremum alpha, as close as we want, in fact. For example, if we take epsilon equal to 1, we're guaranteed some element of S, say A1, so that A1 is greater than alpha minus 1. If we take epsilon equal to 1 half, again, by the epsilon definition of supremum, we're guaranteed an element of S, say A2, so that A2 is greater than alpha minus 1 half. And of course, this continues as we take positive epsilons closer and closer to zero and apply our epsilon definition of supremum. So, in general, we're able to obtain a sequence of elements from S, A n, where each A n is greater than alpha, the supremum, minus 1 over n. So we've just found that a sequence A n with this property exists. By applying this definition of supremum, we can get this sequence a n where every term is in S and where a n is greater than alpha minus one over n. So we suspect this sequence converges to alpha, the supremum of S. Then all that remains is to prove it. 
Here, of course, is where we'll use the sequence squeeze theorem. We know that for all n, just by how we have constructed this sequence, as we already said, a n is greater than alpha minus one over n. However, we also know that for all n, a n is an element of s, and so each a n has to be less than or equal to the supremum of s, which is alpha. Also, since each term a n is greater than alpha minus one over n, certainly each term a n is greater than or equal to each alpha minus one over n. This just makes the inequality fall in line with how we typically state the sequence squeeze theorem. But of course, here on the left and right, we don't necessarily have terms of sequences yet, so let's treat them as sequences and make sure that they converge to what we want them to. So for alpha minus one over n, we could say that Sn is a sequence where each term is equal to alpha minus one over n. We can of course imagine alpha as being a constant sequence where every term is equal to alpha, and a constant sequence converges to its constant value. One over n is itself a sequence which converges to zero. So by the sequence limit law for the difference of sequences, the sequence Sn converges to alpha, the limit of that sequence, minus zero, the limit of that sequence. Alpha minus zero, of course, is alpha. And similarly, for our alpha over here, we could say that the sequence Qn is a constant sequence where each term is equal to alpha, and as I just said, a constant sequence we know converges to its constant value, so that sequence would converge to alpha. There will be links in the description to my lessons proving both of those limit rules that we just used. So finally, now getting us ready to apply the sequence squeeze theorem, we have that every term of our sequence An is is squeezed between Qn and Sn. Remember, Sn is alpha minus one over n, and Qn is alpha. Finally, by the sequence squeeze theorem, since Sn converges to alpha, Qn converges to alpha, and each a n is between Sn and Qn, we have that the sequence a n converges to alpha, which is of course the supremum of S. So I just wrote sequence squeeze theorem there because that's what we applied here to finish things off and we're done. We've just shown that given a subset of the real numbers that is bounded above, we can find a sequence of terms a n where each a n is in s and those terms are getting arbitrarily close to the supremum of the set. So the sequence converges to the supremum. And so any subset of the real numbers that is bounded above contains a sequence converging to its supremum. Oh,